Good morning, everyone. Hello and happy Friday. Thank you for being here with me this bright and early, beautiful new day. I'd love it if you threw something in the comment section or uh, hit a like or say where you're watching from. Um, if we haven't met yet, my name is Jess Daniels and I'm one of the pastors of groups at our Woodbury campus. And in a nutshell, that just means that I get to work with an incredible groups team uh, to help people get connected in community. And I also have the privilege of overseeing our Quest 180 addiction recovery ministry at the Woodbury campus. Uh, so before I get started, I just have to say, you guys, these daily devos have been amazing, right? <laughs> it has been so cool to learn more about everyone and to hear their stories and for all of us to just see how real and relatable each staff member is. Um, I feel like if I took a piece of each story I heard this week and like mashed it together, uh, that's me. That's my story too. Um, and maybe you feel the same way. Uh, so today I get to share with you all my journey of how I came to know Jesus. And so much of my story is about trying to fill a void in my life. And so I want to ask you, uh, is there a void in your life that you've been trying to fill? And if so, what are you filling it with? Uh, I look at my life in seasons and episodes. Um, so we're going to start with season one, uh, which I'll call the one before I knew Jesus. Uh, so I didn't attend church growing up, but for as long as I can, can remember, I yearned to know Jesus um, or God or my creator, whatever that was. Uh, and my friend um, died of leukemia when I was eight. And that's when I have my first recollection of contemplating my faith. I wondered why God would allow an innocent child to die. Um, but even though I lacked the relationship and understanding, I believed that God would give our pain purpose and that he has a plan for us. Like, I don't even know where that came from. I was eight years old and didn't go to church, <laughs> but that hope stuck with me forever. Um, I spent my teenage years wearing a mask that portrayed myself to everyone else that I was like positive and happy and worry-free. Uh, but underneath it, I felt empty and hopeless and alone most of the time. Um, at 16, a teacher saw through my facade and encouraged me to check out an Al-Anon group held at the high school. And this is where my group's journey begins. Um, for the first time in my life, I didn't feel alone and different. Um, I found that Al-Anon provided a safe place for me to share things that were going on in my life at that time. Um, and although as great and helpful as all this was, I was trying to fill a void. I was seeking approval and affection and in all the wrong places doing all the wrong things. I found myself pregnant at 17 and married with two sweet little boys uh, at 19. So here I am, I'm a new parent, I'm a wife, I'm trying to adult, I need a career. So realizing that I had a heart for addiction recovery and for teenagers, uh, at 20, I found a job as an assistant drug counselor at an adolescent treatment center. And it turned out that the 12 steps and small groups and lectures were therapeutic for me as well. I loved the concept of the 12 steps uh, and of having a higher power. Like I said, I always believed there was a God or something greater than myself. Um, so this is where I really started trying on different religions. And notice I say trying on like so casually, like trying on a dress. And if it wasn't comfortable, if it didn't feel right or complement my style, um, then I wasn't buying it. It wasn't for me. So I spent the next few years trying to find the right fit. Um, fast forward a couple years and as it turns out, being so young and unhealthy and lacking a faith foundation uh, probably doesn't make for a sustainable marriage. Uh, so I was divorced at 22 and in my newly found freedom, I started living two very different lives. When my boys weren't with me, I was partying, I was immoral uh, and irresponsible. I was living in sin on so many levels um, and paying the consequences. I was a mess relationally, financially, spiritually, emotionally. 
Uh, however, when I had my boys, I was committed and loving and a strict rule enforcer, believe it or not. You can ask them, they'll tell you. <laughs> I knew that having boundaries and self-control was a good thing, and I knew that I wanted my kids to have those things and learn those things. And I also knew that I wanted them to have a strong faith, but I didn't know what any of those things looked like for me yet. Uh, I did know that they were important, though. So now is where we transition to season two of my life. Uh, the one where I discover my faith. So since I hadn't been having much luck finding a perfect fit religion, I decided to stick to Christianity with a take what you want and leave the rest kind of mentality. Um, I finally settled in at a non-denominational church where the boys and I attended for several years. Uh, we were volunteering regularly. I was growing up a little bit and becoming more responsible and consistent. I had gone to counseling and was processing through some things there, but there was still a lot of shame around my choices and my past. Um, I would often take three steps forward and 10 steps back, and I still had no idea what it truly looked like to have an active relationship with God. I felt like by attending church and volunteering and just being a good person, like overall, that that was enough, but it wasn't. Um, I met my current husband when I was 28 and we married two years later and my little family of three became a blended family of six, adding him and my two stepdaughters. And we had our own little Brady Bunch and I had never been happier. Uh, my husband is consistent and predictable and solid, all the things I needed in my life, uh, but there was still something missing, something that was this big void that my husband, my kids, and my job couldn't fill. So moving on to season three, the one where I walk with Jesus, uh, there was never some big aha moment for me where I hit rock bottom and found Jesus there. I kind of feel like I pretty much just hovered above rock bottom for so many years of my life and I could see him down there, but he was blurred and undefined and I could never really reach him or never tried that hard to reach for him. Um, my relationship with Jesus really actually started when we decided to look for a new church when the boys were going into high school. Um, our previous church was great, but the night that the youth group met on was hard for us to get to. So it was important for me that we found a church with a really good youth program. So some of my family had recommended that we check out Eagle Brook and we started attending and right away, I just knew this was something different. Uh, the messages provided tangible takeaways for me to implement throughout the rest of the week. And before I knew it, I was praying regularly, um, doing devotions and spending time with God. I decided I wanted more. Um, so I started ser serving in the high school uh, student ministries program as a small group leader. And it was so inspiring to me to watch the students and my own kids as they were growing in their faith. All the while I was also growing in mine. And one night, one of our volunteer directors asked me if I'd like to join uh, her small group. And that sounded terrifying. And I made every excuse I could think of why I couldn't do it. I felt so insecure and was very commitment phobic. So luckily she persisted. And I think I finally took it up on her, took her up on it about the third or fourth time <laughs> that she offered. And I'm so glad she didn't give up on me and that I finally accepted. Uh, I met a wonderful group of women who were all striving for the same relationship with Jesus that I was. And being part of a small group helped keep me accountable and kept the momentum when I started to feel stagnant in my faith. So it was kind of all like coming together and make, making sense at this point. I started to identify that void in my life and in my heart for so long was that need to feel worthy. Um, I had been trying all these years to fill that void with all the wrong things that left me feeling more empty and more worthless. And it wasn't until I invited God into my life that I could start to see that void um, was finally shrinking and I felt alive and transformed and unchained from my past. I had found freedom in forgiveness. Um, I was able to forgive myself and those who had hurt me in my past and just as God has forgiven us, um, I've learned to openly extend and receive grace just as God has given us. Uh, my marriage was healthier. I was done 
doing wonders. Um, he has done wonders in me as a wife and as a mom and has intervened and repaired relationships in ways um, that only he can. So life was good. I was much healthier and doing all the things. I got baptized. I was following Jesus. I'm spending time with God. I'm serving. I'm connecting in community. I am trusting him in every aspect of my life except financially. And of all the things, this was the hardest area for me to trust him in. And I had no idea how I was going to do it. Um, but in reluctant obedience, I began tithing. And my tithe was the first thing to come out of my check. And somehow, week after week, I had just enough left over for the rest. Um, whether it was like a credit for a bill I overpaid or a random gift or money I found in my pocket, always just enough. Um, so three months later, I was unexpectedly offered a job that doubled my income. Now, I want to say that I don't believe that this is how like it works for everyone necessarily, but I can say that he's shown me that when I move out of the way, that God has room to do what he does best. So God continues to show up in big ways in my life, and the more obedient I am, um, the more I see him doing. And last summer on a mission trip, our student pastor at the time told me about this group's pastor role that he thought I should apply for. And I thought he was out of his mind. I told myself, they don't want me. If only they knew my past. Have I pretended to be someone that I'm not? Uh, the thought of even the possibility was overwhelming to me. I like actually ignored his suggestion, just chalking it up as a comment kind of in passing. Um, a month later, he reached out again and I figured I better at least see what I was saying no to. So the more I learned about it, the more excited I got, the more I prayed about it. And I went into each interview as transparent as possible so everyone knew what I was all about. And each interview, it became clearer that this is a path that God has been paving all along. And looking back, I can see that God was working in my life this whole time. He was always there and always continues to be. Um, I can see that he was that still small voice when I was eight years old. And he nudged my teacher to guide me. And he was working in those that gave me opportunities that I didn't deserve. He climbed every mountain. He followed me into every dark valley I drug him through. And he never let me out of his reach. So I would like to finish my story here. Uh, by reading you one of my favorite passages, which is Romans 5, 1 through 8. It's a little long, but it just is so fitting for um, my life. I feel like I can just really relate to it, and maybe you will too. So therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confidence, a confident hope in salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Oh, that is so good. Okay, well, there you have it. Uh, man, you guys, it is intimidating <laughs> to do this and be so open and raw with you all today, um, but I really feel like it's my privilege and responsibility to share how God has worked in my life and share the hope that I've found in him. Uh, this weekend, we start a new message series called What I Wish I'd Known Sooner, and the title of Sunday's message is No One is Too Far Gone. Uh, there will be an opportunity for people to say yes to Jesus, and I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty powerful message. Um, so if you're like me and you've been moved by a weekend message you've heard, I want to ask if you'd be willing to pass it on. Um, you guys, this weekend is literally what we're all about and why we exist as a church. Our mission is we are empowered by God to reach others for Christ and others being those who are lost. Those are who 
are feeling too far gone. Uh, those that uh, maybe are trying to fill a void. And you know what? I could have really used a message like this when I was stuck in season one and season two of my life. So I'm thinking about a few people that I'm going to reach out to and extend an invitation to, and I'd ask that you do the same. Uh, who comes to mind when you think of this? And if you're nervous about reaching out, remember, it doesn't have to be like some big thing. It can just be a text message that's like, hey, here's this great message coming up this weekend, and I'd love it if you watched it with me. Uh, and include the link, eaglebrookchurch.com forward slash live. So... You guys, it's time for me to go, but I would love to pray with you before we move on with our day. Dear God, thank you for never leaving me. Thank you for loving me through my worst and showing me that I am worthy of your love. Thank you for everyone that's listening today. I ask that you soften those hearts who have a void and that they surrender their will to you and allow you to move in and to heal. I pray that you give them patience and peace as you're working in them. You are able, you are loving, and you are unconditional. We love you, God. Amen. Well, thanks again for being here, everyone. I hope you all have a great day and take care.